the left used to stand with the little guy, but not anymore. I mean, I'm speaking in terms of political parties mainly, but the movement in general. Trudeau, for example, I mean, he exudes privilege. He's a trust fund kid. No Trudeau has worked in three generations. All the money has come from his grandfather that he's never met. His grandfather was quite an entrepreneur. He had a chain of gas stations around Montreal. Trudeau inherited millions. He doesn't know what it's actually like to pay bills. He's always had daddy's accountants to pay them and daddy's lawyers to bail him out of trouble, like when he sexually assaulted Rose Knight some 20-odd years ago. Trudeau exudes wealth and privilege. Donald Trump's a billionaire, but he's got a working-class sensibility. He knows how to talk to the blue-collar folks. I mean, he's always at construction sites, at least in his previous life. Trudeau, by contrast, has the furn- the adornments, the accoutrements of luxury, private jets, billionaire vacations in the Bahamas, but without the sense of responsibility, without having earned it. In fact, Trudeau seems to be taking advantage. As you know, he separated from his wife, Sophie Trudeau, quite a while ago, but kept that secret so that he could continue to take her, which is really bizarre, on luxury vacations on the government jet. Here's a photo of Sophie Trudeau that she published before it was known that she was seeing another man. I, I'm not talking about prurient details here. I'm not talking about the sexual politics of that bizarre family. I'm saying she was no longer Justin Trudeau's wife in any meaningful way. But she was just coming along for the taxpayer ride. That's what I mean by luxury. Trudeau goes to Jamaica and stays in an $80,000 resort and said, oh, no, no, everyone does this staying with friends. Just absolutely outrageous. That's Justin Trudeau. Jagmeet Singh, incredibly, is even worse. Before he became the leader of the NDP, he actually did glamour photo shoots showing off luxury goods. Tens of thousands of dollars on a watch and luxury travel. I don't begrudge a guy money that he earns, but when you claim to be for the working man and when you rail against the rich, you should play the part in your own personal life, I think. Funny enough, of the three men, Justin Trudeau, Jagmeet Singh, or Pierre Polyev, he's the one by far with the most working class background. And I think he's doing well amongst people in the working classes, not just because he has policies that suit them, but because he's used to them. He's from them. I think he is a working class conservative. Justin Trudeau the other day was in a uh, meeting in Calgary, and he talked about, once I met the overall people, it's like he was in a museum and saw some freak curiosity. Look at that, someone in overalls. Did you see that clip? A few years ago, I was in Hamilton in a classic steel plant, and I was meeting you know, some of those you know, overall folks uh, who were proud to say that they were third and even fourth generation steel workers in Hamilton. Yeah, I, I really don't think anyone in the Liberal Party knows what it's like to be in the working world, to know what it's like to have to make payroll, to know what it's like to have to earn money and have it clawed back by the tax man and have to add more and more hours, but there's just not enough hours in the day. I don't think anyone in Justin Trudeau's circle is like that. Now, Trudeau uses some Marxist language. His budget was basically a soak the rich. You don't like the rich, do you? I don't know if that's working, though, because I think people feel like they should be able to afford things, but the extraordinary inflation and outlandish housing costs and so many terrible things conspiring against them makes it impossible for them to live. Trudeau may be talking about punishing the rich, but it seems like everyone is being punished. Here's a video by Trudeau's right-hand woman in Calgary, the mayor, J.L.T. Gondek. Uh, I'm going to talk more about this in a minute with our friend Lauren Gunter. Um, but just take a look at this and look at this rich woman of privilege, liberal, two houses, saying, oh, if you can't afford a house, well, you'll own nothing, but you'll be happy. Take a look. So we're starting to see a segment of the population reject this idea of owning a home, and they're moving towards rental because it gives them more freedom. Uh, They can travel to different places. They can try out different communities. Their job may take them from place to place. And so people have become much more liberated around what housing looks like and what the tenure of housing looks like. 
But as municipalities, we haven't kept pace with that change. We're still stuck in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. The craziest part there is her implication that wanting a house is some old-fashioned, outdated idea. She didn't come out and say it's racist and bigoted, but I'm sure she wanted to, as if people, only people in the 40s and 50s wanted a house and a backyard and to be able to, you know, maybe have one parent stay home with the kids. I mean, isn't that crazy? We went from a time when dad could work in the factory and come home in time for dinner, and they had enough to have a house and a happy house and maybe the occasional vacation. Those days are long gone. Trudeau said it was a housing budget. What a laugh. I'll talk more about that with Orrin Gunter. But um, in many ways, I don't think it's housing anymore. It's more like warehousing. 900,000 foreign students, many of them from India or China, sharing accommodations meant for a fraction of that. I, I know, especially here in the greater Toronto area, you sometimes have one apartment or one house with four, five, six, seven, eight people in them just jammed in there. That's terrible for them, but it also drives up the price for anyone trying to have that old-fashioned style of living. And look at the solution. Like I say, warehousing people, 40 and 50-story sardine cans. That's not the dream. Here is a tweet showing some proposed and approved housing projects in Kitchener, including 40 and 50-story apartment buildings. In Kitchener? Well, yeah, when you're trying to absorb 2.2 million migrants a year, which is what Trudeau did this year, that's how it's got to be. In Calgary, Jody Gondek is proposing to rezone the entire city that way. Kate McMillan from the website Small Dead Animals had this tweet, making it look like, yeah, that's how they do it in China. It's just so out of touch. I don't think that they actually know how people live and that people do want a house and a backyard and they want to be able to afford it. (laughs) 